Welcome to the step-by-step -step guide on how you can convert SVG files to clean 3D models and render them into a pixel art animation. First of all, select and then press X to delete the default queue. Next, we are going to choose and download the SVG file that we want to use for our model. I will be using this metal icon, but you can choose whatever you like. Just make sure you check the license to see if you have to give attribution before you use it in your projects. Back in Blender again, we can go to File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphic. Next, you can go to your download folder and import your first SVG. On the right, you can see the generated curves. To be able to see them in the viewport, we have to zoom in. At this point, all the curves are completely flat. Especially from the side, you can see that the curves are overlapping. To change that, select one and then go to this small green curve icon. Extrude the selected curve to something like 0.001. Select the overlapping curve and set the extrude to 0.002. Now they have different heights, but the width is still the same. To change this, go under bevel and set the depth to a really small number. Now you can repeat this on all the curves, just make sure that overlapping curves have different extrude and depth values. While the time-lapse plays in the background, I'll explain some things about the SVG file format. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, meaning that they are resolution independent. Rather than consisting of pixels, SVG images consist of shapes. This means that they can scale indefinitely without a reduction of quality. On svgviewer.dev you can upload your file and then see the code which defines the shapes. Back in our project we can select all the curves, then go to object, then to convert to mesh. Now we can select all the parts of the branch on the right side and then we can select all on the left side, hit Ctrl J to join them. Next, repeat this with all the parts of the metal, select them and then hit Ctrl J. As you can see here on the right side, you have only two meshes. I'm going to rename them to branches and metal. The next step will be cleaning up the faces. To see them, we can activate the wireframe view. Now we can go to this blue icon, add modifier, choose decimate, and then go to planar. As you can see, a lot of unnecessary faces have been removed. Now we can do the same with the branches. Just add the modifier, select your object, go to edit mode, then to select all, now we can go to mesh, then clean up, then choose limited dissolve. You can go to the upper right corner and activate the statistics. This will display all the vertices, edges and faces of the scene. Switch back to the object mode so you can select the other object. If we switch back to the edit mode again and do a limited dissolve, we can see the amount of vertices, edges and faces that have been removed. If we take a closer look, we can see that the faces of the mesh are way cleaner now. and. We can do much more with them later on. Switch back to the object mode, hit 7 on the numpad, hit R to rotate. As you can see the origin is set to the 3D cursor. Select all the objects in your scene, then press G to move them. Move them directly in the center on the 3D cursor. Select the branches, go to Object, set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Now I'll do the same thing with the metal. As you can see now the rotation origin is in the middle. To animate the branches we have to make sure that 
the current frame is frame 1. Press I to insert a keyframe. Move the current frame to the last frame. Set the rotation on the Y-axis to 359. By inserting another keyframe here, Blender automatically generates the animation. As you can see, the speed of the animation is not constant by default. To change this, we want to make sure that all of the keyframes are selected. Then right click on the timeline, go to interpolation mode and choose linear. Now the speed stays exactly the same through the whole animation. For the rotation of the metal we can do the exact same process, except we are not going to change the interpolation mode to linear. By having two different interpolation modes we can make sure that the rotations aren't at the same speed. They basically only meet on frame 1, somewhere in the middle, and frame 359. Now we will set up the camera. As you can see it's still really far away. At first we're just going to move the camera really close by setting the X and Y location to 0 and the Z to 0 0.5. By setting all the rotations to 0 and pressing 0 on the numpad we can see that our camera is directly pointing at our object. Now we just make some small adjustments to center our object. If we select our metal and then go to the edit mode, we can make use of the faces we cleaned up earlier. To make the model look more interesting, we are going to extrude the parts of the metal to different values. Just select the faces you want to extrude, hit E, then drag your mouse or set the value manually. If we now look at our model, it looks a little bit better, but it can still be improved. To give the metal more detail, I'll extrude the blue and yellow part some more. As you can see, if we render an image, the background is grey. To change this, go to the camera icon, then go under Film and check the box next to Transparent. If you render it now, the background is transparent. Next, we can delete the default light, then go to the camera icon again, under color management, you can change the exposure and gamma values till you're satisfied with the brightness of your object. To make the object more colorful, we can go under the look drop down and change the contrast. As you might have noticed, imported SVG models come with automatically generated materials that make up the colors on our object. Since we want to render it into pixel art, we don't really want any kind of reflection on the surfaces. To get rid of this, we can go to the Materials tab and set the specular value to 0 for every color. Now that we have everything set up to render it into pixel art, I'll show you two different ways to achieve the pixel art look. The first method produces 250 PNG files with a resolution of 180 by 180 with Blender that we can optionally scale up 400% and export them as a GIF with a sprite. In the second method we will render the PNG files directly to 720 by 720 in Blender and add a pixelate effect in the compositor. Then convert them into a GIF or MP4 with the help of easygif.com. Starting with the first method you can go to the output properties and set the resolution to 180 by 180 pixels. Then we're going to scale up our object so it fits the render view. If we render it now you can see that it doesn't really look like pixel art. To change this we can go to the render settings under film Set the filter size to 0. 
If we render it now, the result is less blurry and we get this cool pixel art effect. Because our render has such a low resolution, we can go to the render properties and set the sampling to 1 to reduce the render time. Next go to the output properties. Here we can create a folder that uh, we will render our frames into. Next I will set the compression to 100%. This will make it so that the file size is smaller. Now we can render all of the 250 frames into the folder we created previously. We just have to wait till it's finished and then we can import all of the PNG files in Asprite and convert them to a GIF. For this we can open a file, just select the first one, open it, the rest will be imported automatically. By clicking on the layer you can select all of the frames, then go to FX outline. Here I've decided to add one white outline and another black one. As you can see the animation speed is pretty slow. To change this we can select all of the frames. And then with right click frame properties I will set it to 50 milliseconds per frame. The GIF file format supports uh, transparency so you can leave the background transparent if you want. I've decided to add one with some dithering just to make it look a little bit more interesting. To export it go to file export, name your output file, make sure that the file extension is set to GIF. I'm going to resize it by 400%. That's it! We now successfully converted the SVG file to a 3D pixel art animation. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. For the second method we first want to create a new folder that we can use to render our files into. Select it as the output path and then set the resolution to 720 by 720. If we render an image now, you can see that there is no pixel art effect. This is where the compositor comes in handy. In here we can add two scale nodes and a pixelate node then connect them between the render layers and the composite, set the X and Y values on the first scale node to 0.2 and on the second to 5. Now that everything is set up, we just have to render the animation and then combine the PNG files to a GIF. For this you can visit easygif.com, they have a really awesome and free GIF maker that converts single frames into the GIF format. Just select your files and upload them. This might take a minute or two but when it's finished you can scroll down and check the box next to don't stack frames. Then you can hit make GIF. Currently the animation is pretty slow. If you want to change this we can go to speed. Just change this value to make it faster or slower. When you're satisfied with the speed of the animation, you can save it and download it as a GIF. That's it! We now successfully converted the SVG file to a 3D pixel art animation. Thank you for everyone that's still watching. I would really appreciate feedback since this was my first tutorial. If you have any suggestions, write them down in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates.